Welcome to the Bennington Development Review Board meeting, May 16th, 2023. So let's begin. Um, Dan, would sure. you please go over the reading of the oath? Yes, I will. Um, we ask that everybody who uh, speaks this evening um, to sign in um, on the podium over there and, and approach the podium to speak. There is a, on the, at the podium will be the following oath statement, which we actually ask you to sign. And it says, I solemnly swear or affirm under the pains and penalty of perjury that the statements I make, testimony I give, and other evidence I submit to the board at the board's public hearing on this date shall be true and correct to the best of my knowledge and belief. And again, we have a sign-in sheet on the podium. We just ask you to sign that before you uh, speak to the board this evening. Um, first item uh, on the agenda this evening after the oath is the minutes from our last meeting. I'll make the motion to approve. Second. Ron, second. <laughs> All in favor? All right, you name. Okay, we do have, um, oh, one, one other thing before we get started. Uh, any disclosure of ex parte communication or conflicts of interest regarding the matter this evening? Everybody's all set? Okay, great. Thank you. Um, okay, we do have one hearing this evening. It's uh, uh, Thomas Rubio, 200 North Street. Um, the applicant, the Heritage Family Credit Union, is seeking design and development plan approval for a new three-story uh, building. Uh, at that site, uh, 200 North Street, as we mentioned. So um, we have the looks like we have the architect and the engineer engineer here today to present. So if you guys will introduce yourselves and kick us off. Okay, my name is Jeffrey Goldstone. I am uh, an architect at Goldstone Architecture here in Bennington, and I'm here representing Heritage Family Credit Union, who was the applicant for this project. I'm joined by Nicole Kesselring. Yourself. Sure. My name is Nicole Kesselring. I'm a civil engineer with Edmund Kesselring Engineers based out of Rutland. Thank you. And, and you both have signed in. We've yeah. both signed in. Great. <laughs> Thank you. This will be a very quick presentation of the project and we'll be open to questions following the presentation. Uh, we propose to construct the building that you're seeing here. Uh, and, and you haven't seen this image before, but this is uh, Computer rendering of what the building will look like on completion, and Nicole is going to uh, discuss the site application, the site aspects of the building. So I'll just walk us through the um, site plan for the property. The plan up on the uh, screen is the um, existing condition site plan. I'm just going to forward to. Sit down here. Okay. So this is our proposed condition site plan. Right now the property characteristics are at um, 0.9 acres in size. The entire property is paved and has the um, commercial automobile dealership building on it. So what we have colored is the entirety of the property. We've got North Main Street right here on the right. North Street. Sorry, Sorry North Street. And River Street across the bottom on the uh, south side of the property. What we're proposing is a complete redevelopment of the property with the building that Jeff just showed you right here in orange. So it's kind of um, going to create like a, a corner um, stone or um, <laughs> really an anchor at the intersection there. Um, complementing also the other brick building across River Street on the south side of this building. We're proposing two access points, but it's really one-way circulation through the property. So off of North Street and um, opposite of the entrance that serves the plaza on the east side of the road, we'll have an entrance. Uh, parking is angled to complement that one-way circulation. And then everyone coming into the site will exit back out to River Street. Um, within the site, we have 18 parking spaces proposed. Um, those will be shared between um, Heritage Family Credit Union and their uses, as well as a potential tenant space on the third floor. There are five spaces reserved for that tenant space. Um, Coming through the site, we have two drive-through lanes, which you can see depicted right here. Um, and I know the um, 
the Q requirement is five cars, and this will provide an excess of a five car Q. In fact, what's depicted here right now is seven vehicles, and you can see that more would fit um, before any uh, blocking of um, parking spaces or um, backing up into the road that would occur. The project represents um, quite a reduction in impervious area, which will also result in a decrease in runoff off of the property. Um, the reduction is close to half an acre that will be turned from pavement back into green space. We, with the design, we're following um, existing drainage patterns, which are primarily to the west. But then once the, um, right now, before any water would run onto the neighbor's land to the west, it exits down to the south onto River Street and enters a catch basin that's located on River Street. And so in the proposed development, the drainage will continue to follow that same pattern. We're also um, proposing to put a catch basin on the property so there wouldn't actually be water running over the sidewalk, but that it would be capturing that water on the property and then conveying it into the town sewers, or into the town drainage system. Um, right now, the curb cuts on the property are kind of overly wide. Um, I don't have a pointer, but the curb cut on North Street runs from here all the way to the north side, north of the driveway. And along the um, southern part of the property, the curb cut begins about here and runs the almost the entire length of that southerly um, property line. So you can see that we're going to be reducing that curb cut significantly and um, installing sidewalk and curbing along the roadway there to tie things together with sidewalk on either side. Do you want to mention something? Yeah. The, um, the property does lie in the floodplain, and the, the dark black dashed line that you see here, this one, represents um, the floodplain as it is today. The building is going to be elevated so that it is outside of the floodplain, and we're doing some grading around the building that will elevate everything around the building. And I've had some conversations with Dan Monks, and I need to follow up with the state floodplain manager just to make sure there's nothing else we need to do related to that. But right now, we believe that the way things have been designed, that it'll be acceptable to the state. I can mention this. The, the landscape plan was provided to you. I think it's in compliance with the requirements of the code with the street trees and the, and the trees within the space. Yeah. And there's numerous planting beds, perennial beds and planting beds um, within the site plan um, <clears throat> that will have further design or detailed design done for them. The project will connect um, new connections to water and sewer, and for those we'll be applying for um, a water and sewer allocation to the town very soon. Um, the other permits that the project is going to be applying for is a state water wastewater permit as well as the uh, town access permit. This is an illustration of the uh, proposed lighting scheme. There is a fully lighted parking lot that will uh, be lighted with the, you know, the photometrics in front of you. I'm sure you can't read them from the screen, but within the guidelines of the town with the ratios and the maximum uh, values, um, as well as from the awnings at the entrances with, uh, on, with uh, soft mounted lights there, and uh, at the drive through as well. All of the lighting is downlit in night sky compliant. Um, so a little about the building itself. We are proposing a brick-clad wood frame building with a, uh, an entrance piece primarily of glass. 
a wood frame behind that as well. Again, we haven't done structural engineering yet, but that's where we're starting. Um, all of the flat panel work is supposed to be high density fiber cement. Um, it is in the uh, MU2 mixed use design area. Uh, sorry, what is that? I've, I've forgotten the exact way that it's put into, in the looter, but um, it meets all the requirements of the uh, form based design. I can reiterate them, but it meets them in terms of the location of the building on the site, in terms of setbacks, the massing of the building, as well as the glazing requirements. And I think with uh, a look at the other two elevations, the drive through is allowed in that district for a bank. Uh, we are planning to do a fenced in dumpster enclosure at the back of the site. And uh, those are some views that we provided to you in the, in the application. So they're here as well. And that completes our presentation. Oh, I'll just mention oh, one sorry. more thing. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> We're proposing a fence around the entire perimeter of the property. Um, kind of like a double-sided fence so that it'll have the same characteristics on both sides. No one's going to get a, a bad view, essentially. Um, and one thing I just wanted to mention to the board is um, in the looter, I noticed that there's a requirement that an access point be 150 feet away from an intersection. These access points are closer than that um, along North Street, we have 118 feet, and along River Street, we have 111 feet. And my understanding was, I guess that's a, a decision of the board to. You're improving the existing situation, so it's not. Okay. It's not an issue. Right. That's. I'm sorry. That's curb cut access. You're talking. That's my yeah. 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 Okay, now we have, we have that does complete our presentation. I'm happy to take any questions. All right, I'll start. Um, do you know the difference between the existing footprint square footage of the existing building and the, the current proposal? I don't, I don't know that I have those numbers. I do not have the numbers, but you can see on the existing condition. These are all to the same scale. Okay. So yeah, that, you can see in the, oh, wait, that's that, not, that the, is same not the same scale. Yeah, Pardon that's, me. Um, but I believe a third. Yeah, so it looks the, less. This plan showed the demolition as well, does it not? No, it's taken oh, off. Yeah. It's it's far. The other the other building is, is much closer to the real property line and does not extend nearly as far to the street. It's I, I would say it's comparable. I, I don't know the numbers. I'm I, happy I to provide actually, them. I actually think the new building is probably closer to half of the size of the old building. As maybe, far as the footprint is concerned? Yeah, yeah. maybe 60% of the existing building. Um, because there's actually two portions to the existing building. There's, kind mm -hmm. of, I think, the garage sure. space on the back and more of like a showroom space on the front. Uh, any other questions from the board? Ron? Yeah, uh, the first two floors are going to be bank for the bank, right? That's correct. Okay, I guess I must have missed it in a, a, a mailing sure, but I didn't see about the apartments. Five apartments upstairs. No, 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 no. Oh. There, the five, there are five parking places designated for the third floor is what uh, Nicole said. The third floor is we are proposing an office rental that could at some future time be uh, used by the bank. So we do have in the floor plans the ability to reach the second, the third floor without walking through the first floor banking area. Um, but there's a stair, there are two staircases that go all three floors. So right now they're not going to be apartments for people. We are not proposing that at this time. I will say, off the record, if I can be off the record here, no, that there's no, some consideration of it being a single apartment. Okay. But that was brought to my attention only after we applied for the permit. So we are applying for the permit as if it were to be. Uh, a business space. Oh, okay. The so reason I asked what I thought it meant residential, and I was going to ask about handicap access, but you don't need that. There's an elevator in the building, so it is fully accessible at all floors, and we do need it for that occupancy. Cool. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bill? Sorry. Yeah. I, I, the the uh, acoustics here are terrible. Did you say there's going to be less runoff from this site than there was before? Did you clarify that? Yeah, so the um, 
Runoff occurs basically instantaneously off of like a paved surface or a rooftop. And with the redevelopment of this property, we're reducing the amount of impervious area, so the footprint of the impervious area, by more than half. So the, the property is uh, 0.9 acres total, and we're reducing impervious area by almost 0.5 acres. So there's going to be a lot of grass and garden space where, and, and also trees planted on the property. And all of those um, take up water or infiltrate water into the ground. Um, we're also proposing the addition of a catch basin on the um, westerly side of the property so that if there is an excess of water that it has a place to go on the property without first having to migrate off the property to get captured. And, and, and you can see, I'm sorry, you can see that we are also piping the roof water to that catch basin. Okay. So that reduces it even more. But the catch basin itself would be an infiltration basin, right? It might. Uh, We'd have an open bottom. Okay. Ron, did you have a question? No. No, Ron had that. Ron. <laughs> no, Ron. Yeah, I, I had a few questions. Uh, very nice presentation. It said a, a couple of things. Um, how um, elevated will the first floor be above the floodplain? You, you mentioned it'll be elevated. We're talking about a foot or two higher than the floodplain. So the, um, the FEMA flood elevation is um, 673 feet in this area. The first floor is going to be one and a half feet higher than that. Okay. But it's outside of the flood zone. Yeah. I think it's important. I think there's a little yeah. confusion here. The building, the, the location in which the building is, the new building is being constructed is not within the floodplain. Right. Right. They're elevating it a little bit further, apparently, but they do not, they're not required to under the floodplain regulations. We're, we're just elevating it to keep drainage moving away from yeah. the building within the site. And, and currently, um, I think you've had the existing site. But as she finds us, this is a, an accurate entrance, an accessible accurate entrance, so we, don't, we can't go very far, very high. So this is showing the existing building, and right about here is an elevation difference in the building. This side of the building is at um, 674.7 feet, whereas this portion of the building is at 672.2 feet. So this portion of the building, the floor elevation is actually lower than the flood elevation right now. This is already just about at, or just a couple tenths of a foot above the elevation that we're setting the new building at. Um, I'm assuming that um, you know, if you have a tenant on the third floor, it won't be a tenant that has many, many employees since you're only reserving five parking spaces for them. It's a small floor plate. Um, I don't think I brought the floor plans. I did not, I did not submit the floor plans, um, and I didn't put them in my presentation, but I can show you approximately the square footage of the the floor. So this is a this is the, the first floor plan as it is currently developed. This portion of the first floor is not replicated on the second or third floor. So this is the entire third floor area. And of course with the stairs coming up and the elevator coming up, it's not that large. So I think we have six offices designated at the moment. This could change. It's intended to be a build out for a particular client if a client comes along. So we may, in fact, leave it open at this point, but five parking places, I think, would probably more than adequately serve that number of square feet per the requirements. I'm not, I didn't check those requirements. No requirements for parking for commercial uses, only one per resident, so they're okay. well so above, the, they well above anything. Five would need. be more than none. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Just one other picky thing, I guess. Um, the MU2 talks about uh, having benches. Um, yeah. And I was wondering if it would be a good idea to have a bench, I guess you'd call it along the northeast corner. You propose a bench, a bench in the little courtyard in front of the, of the building here, but not on the sidewalk itself, but it's accessible from the sidewalk and bicycle rack here. That's all I have. Are there any questions from the audience?
And again, if there are, I remind you to go to the podium. I'm sorry, sir. So please go to podium, sign in, and state your name and town. Okay, um, my name's Ken Sigsbury. I, I live on River Street, um, the house that abuts. I just had a conversation with Jeff last yes. week to determine what the distance was from the building to the property line at our residence because of snow removal and things like that. When the um, car dealership was there, they used to push the snow up against our house because that's where the, the property line was. And I know they're not going to do that, and I know the the, the building is actually, would you say, 100 feet further away from us than the existing building. We don't have any problem with that. But I noticed today, since we're only going to have one exit that exits out to River Street, on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, the Dutchman from noontime on is just loaded. River Street is full of cars on both sides. There's not enough room for cars to go down and up while there's cars parked on both sides. There's just not enough room on River Street. Years, you know, maybe 10 years ago it was a one-way street. Now it's a two-way street. But um, with the additional traffic coming through, I think that may be a problem because some of the people that go to the Dutchman are actually parking in that parking area at the uh, car dealership now. And then over at the dentist and then both sides on the street are full. So we have a parking problem. Sometimes I can't even get out of our driveway. The parking's so bad over there. But that's that's another issue. But no, that's the only question I had. I, just, I wanted to address parking. I'll just say that I mean the Dutchman is almost directly across the street from a large municipal parking lot. Yeah, yeah so, it's behind. Yeah, it's behind. But if you drive up and you're going to go out to dinner, would you like to walk 10 feet or 50 feet? You know? Understood. Yeah. But if it does become that's, a problem, we can certainly. Restrict parking there. I would like. I would like to ask the when you, Mr. Sixbury, when the when you when you uh, identified parking problems. What times of the day is that? Is it in the From evening? Noon time. I say on Tuesdays because Tuesdays they have some going on there, and always Fridays and Saturdays. At night. At it no, from like noon time okay. yeah. till till about whenever they close. Okay. Uh, sometimes you know those other days there's there's attics where you you can get by. I mean. And then there's no rule about parking next to a corner. And these guys are parking right up against the corner that goes on to Depot Street. And but there's no, you know, see how you see don't park ten feet, you gotta park like ten feet away or no parking from here over, but they go right up to the stop sign on both sides. Yeah, that's actually not legal, but thank you. Yeah, no, thank you for that. I think the PD should be looking into that, so. Thank you. I don't think that was a question directed at us. No. When I get through. Yeah, one more thing. Uh, how are you heating in place? Heating? Yeah. Don't know yet. It's Pardon me? Up, we don't know yet. It will be an all electric building. We're committed to that. So it will be heat pumps of some variety. Oh, but okay. I can't tell you at this point what they will be. We do expect there will be some rooftop units, um, whether they be heat, pump, the heat pumps themselves or ERVs or a combination. Um, we do have a, a Mechanical engineer who has just been hired as we go forward to the project, and um, one of the requirements would be that it is all electric. The only reason I asked was if we're going to use propane, if there's going to be a tank outside or not, we're not going to be using propane. We do not anticipate there being. Of course, it is moving. We got to ask that. We're going to use body heat while we're bobbing. Any other audience questions or comments? What's the board's pleasure? I'll make a motion to approve as presented. Um, I think maybe we should have a short meeting now. Oh. So make, you want to make a motion? Yeah, I think make a motion. Instead of just ask Charlie to do the job? Yeah. Okay. We'll make a motion to go to a deliberative yeah. session. 
Charlie Seconds. All in favor?